What's going on guys, it's Cliffy here today taking on Sri Lanka in our final game I guess of the calendar, this is the last scheduled game um, for this I guess season, not really calendar year, I think we are only in about September, taking on Sri Lanka who we do have a 2-0 lead over in the T20 series um, and we just want to go and try and I guess reiterate the fact that we are a powerhouse in all three formats. We've got a few, not new players, but players who are coming back Kira Noema Barnett in there still. Um, Tommy Latham in the side as well. He's opening the batting as Martin. I believe, is it Martin Guptill? No, it must be Hamish Rutherford. Hamish Rutherford is injured. Brendan McCullum also out of the side. Daryl Mitchell in there. Because Daryl Mitchell, I really want to kind of make, um, I guess, the replacement in the middle water for when Ross Taylor and Brendan McCullum um, decide to call time on their career. Which, you know, we are in 2018 now, so we are three years um in the future, oh my god, what have I done? I've bowled these two three overs each. That's not what I wanted to do. Shit. Oh well. Can't be helped now. They're going at a very good run rate. The pitch I don't think is that good. So hopefully uh, the likes of Bracewell, Noema Barnett, Nisham, uh, and Kane Williamson, who may even come in and have a wee bowl today, because the pitch is turning a little bit apparently, uh, can go and be economical and keep the runs down. You know, that's what we need. We need to keep the runs down. And surprisingly enough, in this series, it hasn't really been the Sri Lankan big three that are still playing for the side, funny enough, that have been going and getting all the wickets. It has been Thuramani and Chandamal who have been smashing it for them. Um, so we really need to go and try and stop those guys. We really need to pick up a wicket here, because we have only picked up... Well, it was in the power play that we picked up those three. So we really need to go and try and pick it back. And Noema Barnett has done that. He's got a funny knack of picking up wickets, this guy. You know, I'm not complaining. He's a very good player down towards the end. Well, not the end, but, you know, down towards, I guess, the all-rounder position. And I guess he's one of those players who maybe is a wee bit unlucky, you know, not to possibly get a chance to go and play for New Zealand. Because I think he's one of those guys, hard-hitting middle-water batsman, can come in and bowl very handy... Um, you know, medium pace, and it's, it's a wee bit of a shame that he didn't go and get his chance to go and shine, because I think he may have been a big success for New Zealand, you know, being one of those players that could have gone and replaced the likes of Jacob Warham, um, etc, etc, um, well, Jacob Warham, Scott Styros, I guess, um, Chris Keynes, because we have had a lot of players uh, in recent times that, that, you know, have batted five, six, um, possibly even seven that have been still very good all-rounders for us and very good bowlers that can go and do a job. You know, they're not just there to make up the numbers. Um, and I think Kieran Noema Barnett could have been one of those guys, but he didn't obviously get his chance at the top level. And he's gone. I think now he's actually playing over um, in England. I think he's got a county contract over there, so good on him for that there. But as I said, he's just got a knack of picking up wickets. He's got 21 wickets now and 14 T20 internationals. He can't really do it. You know, he's one of those guys who is just, I guess, a T20 specialist for me. He doesn't really play one-day cricket. I don't really want to use him for... Um, oh, that would have been bad. I don't really want to use him for test cricket either because I think I've got my, my test cricket lineup pretty sorted at the moment. Um... And yeah, he's just one, I guess he's one of those guys who just goes in and does a job. And I mean, he's opened the batting for me in a couple of occasions just when I uh, have been mixing things around with Hamish Rudd for being injured. Because he's a guy who, he's really um, progressed quite a lot in the recent, well, in the last couple of seasons to a guy who's not just a test opener, but who is opening in all three forms of the game and succeeding. You know, he's doing well. So after Sri Lanka's incredible start, they do get rolled. Well, I wouldn't say rolled for 141, but they get all out for 141. So it'll be very, very interesting to see how Tommy Latham and Martin Guptill go about this chase. Well, Latham didn't stick around too long. He only scored one or four. Kane Williamson, on the other hand, he has been smashing it lately in T20s. Look at that average. That average is up over 50. Martin Guptill isn't too far behind. They have been probably the cornerstone of our T20 side in recent times, averaging 42 and 53. So hopefully Williamson can go and carry on his good form today. Hopefully Guptill can go and do the same. And as I said, we've had Hamish Rutherford up there as well. And basically, a lot of the times, it has just been those three who have been scoring the bulk of our runs. McCullum's been coming in later in on the innings and just smashing a few. Ross Taylor doing the same. You know, maybe even Jimmy Neesham, Luke Ronke hasn't really had an opportunity with the bat in quite a long time, which I'm not complaining about. You know, I'm not complaining about that because if we don't need our number six and our number sevens to bat, it means that our top order are going and getting the job done which is very good to see, you know, you prefer, I will personally, I would prefer, you know, my top four or five to go and get the job done, score all the runs and have to have, you know, your all-rounder and your wicketkeeper come in and bat, you know, it is going to happen some days, some days things aren't going to go your way, things aren't going to work, 
But I mean, lately it has just been working perfectly. And why go and change it, you know? They're just smashing it. And as you can see, Guptill here is carrying on his good form. He's moved on to 80. Kane williamson has been a wee bit, well, I wouldn't say slow today, but he's been a wee bit slower than usual. Normally he does hit a few more boundaries, but he has moved on and scored a crucial 50 in this game. He hasn't really had to go too quick because Martin Guptill has gone and done all the damage. He finishes up with 85 not out of 58 deliveries. Picks up the man of the match as we had come to expect. And all in all, a pretty comfortable win for New Zealand. Everyone chipping in with the ball. And Martin Guptill and Cameron Lewison doing it all. Tom Latham just with the run, one run today. But as you can see, we are now done. That is everything done on, I guess, this part of the calendar. So we're moving on to the next one, which is cool. There must be a T20 World Cup or maybe... Yeah, there must be a T20 World Cup coming up. No, there'll be a World Cup next year, 2019. So there's a World Cup coming up soon. It'll be interesting to see whereabouts that is being played. But anyway, guys, do hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please remember to leave a like. If you are new, please do subscribe. Tune in later today. I'm going to have both my Dutch domination upload and a live stream that will be coming your guys' way. Probably in the evening, I'd say. But um, keep an eye on my Facebook page because that is where all the news is going to be announced. Hope you guys have had a good weekend.